I... Okay. I had plans to talk about Chris Jericho versus Nick Gage and all the stuff that came out about that. And as you can see, Bray Wyatt's behind me. I was out out today with mask, full protection, everything needed to handle the COVID crisis. When I got a message uh, from my uh, from from Twitter, one of my followers, so one of my buddies from ATW King, sent me a, sent a message saying that there's the rest of both sent a, a wide eye expression expression tweet and I initially thought oh this is uh the look in my eyes more CM Punk talk I thought that and then Sean Rossab made a tweet just moments after where he says oh boy or ah boy and then I went and then as I was trying to wonder what the heck's going on I go to Wrestle Critic on Twitter and he posts a deleted tweet post image that Bray Wyatt was fired. Oh, he was released, they said, but let's be real, it was fired. And then WWE reposted it and announced that, yep, Winhen Rotunda, Bray Wyatt, The Fiend, Husky Harris, was fired, released in his future endeavors and all that. So, yeah. Bray Wyatt is gone. That's it. He, he's gone. Okay, I'm gonna be straight up real here. I didn't think this was gonna happen. I honestly thought Bray Wyatt was gonna be a WWE lifer. I thought he was permanently etched in WWE continuity. I thought he was gonna be a WWE guy for the rest of his days and go out and do his job have highs and lows no matter how many times people got mad over how he was booked and yeah this is um I am I was mad when I heard this I was like you fired Bray Wyatt you mofos and then Dave Meltzer and later was backed up by Fightful that yes Bray Wyatt was let go now when I heard this I was like okay let's wait for the full story because he has been battling depression he's grieving he's having a hard time processing Brody Lee's passing after all this time which is why it makes that match he had at Wrestlemania where he screams out yeah, yeah, yeah. because everyone knew Brody Lee and him were buddies they were practically family in their way in their time so yeah Bray Wyatt uh, Bray Wyatt goes ahead and it was released and it was reported that Dave Meltzer said and there was some backup to that where yes it was budget cut reasons. John Lauren and I has called him and said, Hey kid, it's a budget thing. Best of luck in your future's endeavors. Which is further proving that CM Punk was right. And the fact that the other day still allows him, still allowed him to talk when he was spitting out, out evidence after evidence after evidence that WWE was not a good company. There we go. So yeah. Uh, apparently, yeah, they corroborated with the, the Fightful Select corroborated with the budget cut reason. 
and then I found out from research from the Dark Side of the Ring researcher David Brixman that par that I didn't know this. I don't know if that was the case, but if that was indeed the case, this makes what they did to this guy so more tragic. So you see all this gear on him and all this this mask he has. Yeah, he spent all he spent thousands of dollars on this. This was all his. Everything you saw from 2019 to 2020, this was all him. This was all Bray Wyatt's passion project. If Bray Wyatt was really spending the money to make this, to prove, since the wrestlers do reportedly have to pay for their gear, so yeah, and, and they, if Bray Wyatt had to basically give money to Vince to say, I want to do this. It just makes this more tragic for me because I I freaking love Wyndham Rotunda and his creative mind. I, I really do. I thought he created a universe, even with all the constraints given to him by the creative team. Uh, and apparently, accordingly, they were confirmed that tentative creative plans were in place for him to come back. He was set to come back in August and do, and even was planned for some merchandise events and even people were in WWE were surprised by this reason seeing as Brian Wyatt was a great merchandise mover whenever he was active on TV and Fightful notes this and this only for and this validates Vince Russo's claim about WWE Fightful reports Fightful's report also notes that individuals on WWE's creative team were under the impression that Wyatt was becoming increasingly more protective of his character following what was seen as poor creative decisions and ideas thrown his way. This kind of validates what Vince Russo claimed why Bray Wyatt was never going to be taken as the level he should be given, he should have earned, that he's rightfully earned, where he claimed that that WWE management and creative don't like Bray Wyatt, Wyndham Rotunda, because he was better than them. He could make good, compelling stories. He made me care. He made me care about what he was doing. I, like, when I first saw his whole puppet stuff, I was like, okay, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And then he made it work. And then he took what were all these roadblock after roadblock after roadblock after roadblock given to him. And he goes ahead and it's like, okay, I can fix this. I can turn this into a story. I can make up for these mistakes that they gave me and I can turn it into a massive cohesive story. And thus, we got the fiend here, the harbinger of vengeance, the one who wanted to right the wrongs of, of Stin's past. And this was a really compelling story. And then the whole Hell in a Cell match wrecked a lot of it, but then they course corrected and then the hostage crisis happened. I still think it's something did else happen on that foot day, but uh, mechanical issues, and WWE and the government can't talk about it. But moving on from that, but but there's all these all these ideas that Ray Wyatt put on TV were really compelling, and I feel also sad for Alexa Bliss. She came out came out gave a heartfelt message that she was just as shocked as everyone else, and she gets harassed to the point she had to private her account again because they accuse her of being the reason everything fell apart no it's wwe bray wyatt tried, like i felt like near the end of 2020 a lot of stuff bray wyatt was like it was becoming a, a clash of ideas like one side was like okay i he want we could do this let's propose this stuff and bray wyatt was really against certain stuff i think like there were reports that he didn't like the red lighting and then he had to like, okay, if it's a Vince thing, he wants to put his imprint on here. So, okay, fine. And he did try his dandest to make it work, uh, even though people didn't like it. Not because of it wouldn't, was a good idea. It was more like a, it kind of, you know, blocks, it impedes a lot of people's vision of the show when trying to watch it and, the, and whatnot. That, like that's what happened with Randy Orton and AJ Styles the years back during their WrestleMania match where people were like we can't see and everything because the light was so damn bright and, I, and I'm looking now I mean like 
this guy was one of my favorites. I always, as much as I would have loved to see him just tell Vince to go F off and go somewhere else, I always thought he was going to be a WWE lifer. I really thought so. I really thought he was going to always be a guy in WWE because his family's always been WWE affiliated a lot, and they'll always be WWE affiliated, I thought. And, like, his character fits the sports entertainment aspect that Vince wants. But I, I genuinely think Nick Khan may have something to do with this. That it was said that Nick Khan has been described as a ruthless man. He doesn't care. He's everything Vince loves in a person. So he's now. I wouldn't be surprised if he's the next heir to trip to the throne that was get, supposed to be going to Triple H, and then Vince hated Triple H because he actually gave two shits. So, yeah, I'm mad. I, I was really pissed. Like, even now, just talking about this makes me mad. I, and I'm worried. I was hoping, I, I sincerely hoped, this was just a mutual decision. Both parties came to an agreement so Bray Wyatt could take as much time without, break, without, without the company having to constantly go ahead and get money issues out of this or something like that or Bray Wyatt felt bad. I genuinely had hoped that this was a mutual decision. Everything's pointing that no, WWE, even after they posted yesterday that we broke record profits, it's a budget thing. Yeah, remember that? They had a call prior where they said, we broke record profits. It's this quarter. And also, and then and now they now they recontextualize this what was thought to be a sarcastic witty joke is now turned into a quote, oh my god, what the hell, Vince? Where Vince said that AEW's not competition, I don't know what they're doing with their investments, but it but we can certainly send more talent their way. So you just admitted that all your guys are cattle, and reportedly they were mad about that. That meant to be prop meant to be disposed of, sucked the life out, and then thrown into the garbage bin. I sit here wearing an American Nightmare shirt. I, I'm just... I'm worried for Brett for Watunda. I really am. Because I've had struggles with my health, mental health. I go through self-loathing. I go through depression. I don't know... I don't think, I don't know if I've ever experienced proper grieving. Even when I had family members that passed away, I just didn't know how to process that. But Bray Wyatt, Rotunda's health is the problem I ha I'm worried about. Because he was set for return. He looked, he, he was in great shape. There was photos surfacing that he was in great shape. It looked like he was giving up for return. And then the other, he just called and says, Hey kid, it's a budget thing. Best of luck in your future endeavors. And I'm like, fuck off. And yeah, I remember that Instagram post he made about about like earlier this year where they where he talked about how words can hurt and how how they hate his how people how there have been people who harassed Rotunda for his style in the ring and and those who say they ruined him and whatnot. Uh, like I always feel like they screw up him, screw him up, and I wouldn't say ruin all the way on that because he always bounced back. He always proved that he can make things work, work if you just gave him the resources needed. Ruin would mean he could never recover, and there are times we do feel like he got ruined by WWE, got thrown per, put on the back burner and stuff, but he always found a way to bounce back. Even when, even when WWE clearly showed the signs that they didn't want him to bounce back. So yeah, I was hoping that this was a mutual decision, and it's not. It's looking more and more like, like WWE just said, "Eh, we could have used." Like they, they can't tell them the truth. They can't tell anyone the truth because if they did, they look bad more than ever. Because oh, 
Nick Khan said he doesn't care about you because that's what was reported by Nick Khan. And then Sean Ross Sapp deleted saying that this wasn't Nick Khan's fault because WWE contacted him about it scene. I, I don't know, but like when we heard the whole stuff about how Nick Khan has been this ruthless person who doesn't care about anyone's position on the car, who doesn't care if they're related, he doesn't care if they're married to someone in the company, he doesn't care, and, and now we can say he doesn't probably care about mental health. And now I'm seeing people defending WWE for this. The guy who made money for them, gave them some awesome content, it is now gone. I don't know what's happened. I don't know how he's feeling about this. And, and I've seen a whole ton of people sending him love, saying to him, thank you, Bray. We love you, Bray. Everything you've done, everything you've provided. And, and it's apologizing on WWE's behalf. Because WWE's not going to give him that. I'm hoping WWE, at the very freaking least, after everything he's been through, and after what they've done to him, I just hope they give him everything he worked on. Full rights. I know that's a day, that's a dream. I'm hoping they give, they let him have the option to forgo his current OKP clause. Because here's the thing: there were so many more matches I wanted him to do in WWE. I wanted him to fight Roman Reigns again. I wanted to see him in a match with one-on-one -on -one match with him. I wanted them to follow through on 2015. I wanted him to work with all these guys. I wanted him to go back to NXT and work with people there. Go back to where he was born from. I'm um, in Bray's hell. I wanted him to work with Samoa Joe. I wanted him to work there. Now, there are people who said that they don't like it when people fantasy book ideas for him. And, and I'm mixed about that. Like, I'm more concerned about his mental health. But yeah, what, what do I fantasy book about? What could Bray Wyatt do now? Yeah, I have. I'm not ashamed to say that because there, because it, but here's the thing I also said. I said, and me and others agreed on ATW, that if Bray Wyatt retires tomorrow or he retires and decides not to continue and, and he's lost his passion for this, We'll support him all the way through. I really think Bray Wyatt can bounce back from this if he doesn't go continue wrestling because that guy is a freaking great writer when it comes to telling stories. And I've said this for years. I'm pretty sure he would have a successful career being a writer, or being a storyteller, or being a comic book writer, or being a anything he puts his mind to. That's how great of a storyteller I felt like he was. That he could he could take what he's created in wrestling and apply it to other medium. I feel like he could be a living multimedia franchise there. If he wants to keep wrestling, I really I, I, I I'm gonna be honest. I know people say AEW hires too many people. I get that. I I kind of hope that if they if they ever said we need one more person, I'm hoping Bray Wyatt's that one last person. Because there are so many people there I would love to see him work with. And he doesn't have to go to AEW. He can go to Impact. He can go to Japan. He can do all these other stuff. He can just stay in America and whatnot and do some stuff there. Then probably just visit Japan once in a while. There's so much stuff this guy brings. There's so much stuff he's done. So many stories he's told. And I felt like more stories could have been made with him. I've said this before, when WWE allows themselves to try, they can be the best in the world at what they do. They don't want to try. This guy is an artist. He, he's a writing artist here. He tells so many interesting stories, psychological stories, and I would love if he, if he made movies, if he made TV, if he made products. If he made his own brand and whatnot. That's how damn good of a storytelling he a storytelling he is, I feel like. Like, I, I write fan fiction and I have ideas where to take Bray Wyatt's character and make a whole multiverse of him. How I want him to basically be the big final boss in one of my saga stories. Not a saga fan fiction, not that I mean like my own fan fiction multiverse saga. And I even thought of something called the Wyatt verse, something that I called what he's been doing for the past for the past decade, 
crafting a whole expanded universe uh, of his characters, reincarnating them, uh, retconning Husky Harris and saying, oh yeah, that's Bray Wyatt as well. This was, and how Bray Wyatt took over Husky Harris and Husky Harris is still still canon in, in Winham Rotunda's worldview. And, and please know, all this almost didn't happen. He was almost fired. But Triple H saved him. Saved his career. Yeah, he was almost fired for two reasons. One, oh, he's not he's too big. He he he's a little overweight. I have a problem with that. And I'm like, okay, if you're worried about his health, that's one thing, but it sounds like you just want him to be your perfect vision of what a person should look like. And the other reason was he didn't apologize enough to Cena for poking him in the eye like a heel does at a house show. Oh, even when the, even though Cena clearly doesn't care, he's he's always been forgiving for people. Remember when Nakamura dropped him on his neck and Nakamura apologized and Cena said you did nothing wrong, kid. And Vince still went ahead and got offended for Cena, even when Cena had no issues with Nakamura. And Triple H was like, no, 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 keep let me keep let me take him, let me take him under my wing. This kid's got promise here. I see this. I see a lot of good things in this kid. And look what we got. Only for all that work to be fucked over because Nick Khan and Vince go ahead and cite budget reasons a day after their little we broke record revenue. I got nothing else to say. I'm done. I just, I'm hoping the best for this guy. If he still wants to wrestle, I, I hope he lands somewhere. I know a lot of people should benefit from him and what he brings to that table. I just hope he does well. I definitely think that if he still wants to wrestle, I do see him going at EW if for no other reason. Not because... Dark Order leading, even though they clearly made it clear that they won't do it without Brody. But Brody will be his reason to go to AEW, to honor him, to respect him, to finish what Brody started in wrestling. To finish what he started in AEW. I definitely think that. Best of luck, Rotunda. I, 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 hope, you, I hope you bounce back from this. I hope your mind is in a good place. And I really hope uh, you're a hell of a talented guy, a talented writer. I just really hope you, you have a lot more to offer.